live from Washington, D.C. The Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception and the Eternal Word Television Network present The Solemn Mass of Easter Sunday with the Most Reverend Wilton D. Gregory, Archbishop of Washington as celebrant and homilist.
Good afternoon and happy Easter. It is my honor as rector to welcome you to this Easter Sunday Mass from the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. While the coronavirus precautions do not allow our many friends to join us in person to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord this day, I am delighted that we're able to come to you. Come into your home for Easter Mass, thanks to the assistance of the Eternal Word Television Network. In addition, we're happy to welcome our friends from the Catholic Channel of Sirius XM Radio, We Are One Body Radio, and foxnews.com. We are delighted to have as the celebrant and homilist for today's Mass, the Archbishop of Washington and Chairman of the National Shrine Board of Trustees, Archbishop Bolton Gregory. Since you will not be able to receive our Lord in Holy Communion on this Easter day, we invite you during communion to make a spiritual communion, asking the Lord to fill you with his risen presence. As we enter the prayer of the Mass, let us unite ourselves with all those throughout the world who are suffering the effects of the coronavirus, asking Almighty God to console them with his loving embrace and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Bring health to the sick, strength to those dedicated individuals who serve their needs, comfort to families, and eternal life to all those who have died. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, on this most joyful day, let us take heart in the love that the Father has for us as we ask him to forgive our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we, may who, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of what he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and yours forever. Let the hearts of Israel say, His mercy and yours forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be. of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The 
stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, keeping track of time is a critical concern for all of us. Each one of us at one time or another must have felt like we were a prisoner of time. This year, we may all feel like time has a lock on us as we restrict our movements to a confined space while we await the conquest of COVID-19. Most of us learned to wear and to take advantage of the conveniences of watches as relatively young children. One of the earlier lessons in school that we were all taught was how to tell time. We have countless clocks, calendars, and smartphones in all of our lives, in our homes, schools, and offices. We are very much aware of the value of time in allotting the moments of our lives. We even now resort to atomic clocks to calculate the precise time of day. And twice each year, we change our clocks to take the greatest advantage of the presence of the sun. Every four years, we adjust the calendar by one day to keep our days aligned with the exact movement of the earth around the sun. And occasionally, we even add a leap second or two for greater precision. Whether we use the Julian 
or the Gregorian calendar, we depend upon these charts to help us calculate the secular and the religious moments of our lives. Most of us would feel lost without the mechanisms and the charts that keep us aware of the days, hours, and minutes of our lives. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. It was very important for John, the gospel writer, to take note that these events happened on the first day of the week, Sunday, and that they took place very early in the morning. Something about time intrudes into the very telling of this most important story of faith. The first day of the week, the very day on which God began his creation in the first place, in darkness, before the sun emerged, the true sun arose. John's story is all about the recreation of time and all the elements that God had first fashioned at the beginning of time. Easter resets all the clocks and calendars in all of our lives and in our future. Easter is the first day of the new creation. Everything that God had first created and at the time judged to have been very good has now been made perfect on Easter. God's most amazing creature, man, was made new and even more godlike on Easter. That creature that God had first fashioned in his image has become even more a true reflection of God. All the flaws and the imperfections that had found their way into creation were set right on Easter Sunday the first day of the week, and the sun that rose that day will never set. Darkness forever is banished because of this new day of creation. Jesus is the new Adam, perfect in every fashion, and his resurrection is the commencement of a new era that eventually, in God's time, will bring all of us into that new creation. Our Christian faith tells us that the resurrection is the correction and the transformation of all that was flawed in that first universe. Jesus himself is the perfect new man and the prototype of what we shall all become you and me, in God's new creation. As we celebrate once again this primary feast of the Christian calendar, we are reminded to change our clocks, not just to advance them one hour forward or one hour backward, not merely to add another leap day to the calendar so that we are in sync with the sun, not even to add a leap second or two so that our watches are more accurate, but to anticipate living in a new moment of perfection because of Christ's resurrection from the dead. Easter is the dawn of a new world and the beginning of a new era that transforms all of creation and extends the invitation to all of us to begin living in a new way within this perfected creation. We are all born again through water and the Holy Spirit. Just as that first birth that we experienced was accomplished by passing through the amniotic waters of life, so too is our new birth accomplished through the waters 
of the baptismal font, the womb of the church will soon, we pray, bring forth new children once again as our newly baptized, glistening with the chrism of salvation and reminding us of their new creation. Everything is made new in the light of Christ's resurrection. So, reset your watches and clocks and calendars, not merely to have them more accurate, but to have them remind us all that a new day has dawned and we are destined to live forever in God's time. Amen. Alleluia. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church. And so I now ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
with the joy of the resurrection renewed in our hearts, we now turn to God and to offer our prayers for the needs, for our needs, and those of the whole world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God will strengthen him to be a faithful servant of the gospel and a voice of peace and hope in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our president, legislators, judges, and all those in service to the common good, that through the gift of heavenly wisdom, they may never tire in their commitment to uphold religious freedom, the sanctity of marriage, and the dignity of all human life. From the first moment of conception until natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will devote their lives in loving service to the poor, to immigrants and refugees, the marginalized, the sick, and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our prayers for all those affected by the coronavirus and those who care for them may be a source of encouragement that with the strength of faith, the certainty of hope, and the fervor of charity, concerns will be alleviated and health restored. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the joyful celebration of the resurrection will inspire a deeper faith in the heart of all God's people and encourage within them a desire to share that faith with others in the perennial mission of evangelization. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many will recognize the gifts God has given them and be open to using those gifts in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions we hold in our hearts, as well as those enrolled in the National Shrine's Easter Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of those who have died, especially those who have lost their lives because of the coronavirus, that they may now share in the resurrection, in the glory of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now recite together the prayer of Our Lady, Health of the Sick. O oh Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, divine mother of, mother of divine love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection, amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of this name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your Church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day above all, to laud you more, yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, with Michael and Mario and Roy, our auxiliary bishops, and Donald William, our retired archbishop, and all who hold, who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Laris Chrysogenes, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water, the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help, and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.